Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Law 20 of 2021, amending some provisions of the Commercial Companies Law promulgated by Decree Law 21 of 2001. His Majesty the King also issued Decree Law 22 of 2021, promulgating the issuance of the execution law in the civil and commercial matters. Article 1 stipulates that the provisions of the attached law should be enforced in the matter of implementation in civil and commercial matters. Article 2 stipulates that the provisions of the accompanying law shall apply to the execution procedures for which other laws stipulate the applicability of the civil and commercial procedures law. Article 3 stipulates that the provisions of the accompanying law shall apply to existing execution files prior to its entry into force and the status of these files should be reconciled according to its provisions within three months from its date of enforcement. The application of the provisions of the accompanying law does not affect the existing seizure procedures and the sale procedures that have been initiated. The Minister concerned with the Justice Affairs after the approval of the Supreme Judicial Council shall issue a decision on the mechanism for reconciling the status of these files. Article 4 stipulates that Chapter 8 of the Civil and Commercial Procedures Law promulgated by Legislative Decree 12 of 1971 should be repealed. And Article 5 stipulates that the Minister concerned with the Justice Affairs shall issue the executive decisions of the attached law within six months from the day following the date of issuance in the official Gazette. His Majesty the King's personal representative, the Supreme Council for the Environment, the SCE President, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, made a statement on the World Ozone Day, in which he said that the Kingdom has arrived at achievements in the environmental field thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He said that the world has witnessed international cooperation to combat the pandemic and that similar efforts will help in protecting the environment. He discussed the importance of protecting the ozone layer and the Kingdom has taken advanced steps to protect it, including signing the Virginia Treaty in 1990 and its commitment to the responsibilities to protect the planet against UV light. His Highness discussed the SCE's strategy to phase out the use of gases that affect the ozone layer by 2030 and affirmed the ongoing cooperation across all sectors in this regard. He expressed pride in the international achievements in protecting the ozone layer and praised all SCE affiliates in carrying out its policies, which have earned the Kingdom international recognition in this field. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has extended gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, for his praise of the Foundation's continuous humanitarian contributions to provide urgent relief aid to Afghanistan. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also hailed His Majesty the King's pride in all those who participated in the evacuation and relief operations and contributed to their success. His Highness added that His Majesty the King's praise is the greatest branch of honour that the RHF could receive from a great personality and a highly inspiring leader whose directives are always a guide in the service of Bahrain and humanity. He also said that His Majesty the King is an outstanding example of generosity and selflessness for the sake of this country and in serving humanity in Bahrain and abroad. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that this was evident in many historical situations and moments, disasters and crises that had struck peoples and brotherly and friendly countries, highlighting that His Majesty was invariably keen to extend his hand to all and consequently Bahrain and the Royal Humanitarian Foundation won international praise and numerous awards in providing humanitarian and relief aid. Sheikh Nasser noted that His Majesty the King's praise and guide will be for the RHF the most potent motivation to contribute more and serve humanity. For his part, the RHF Secretary General Mustafa Al Sayed extended thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for praising the efforts of the RHF. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs and chairman of the board of directors of the oil and gas holding company, Nuga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, appointed Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and the CEO of the Supreme Council for Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana, as Acting Managing Director of the company. Under His Highness Sheikh Nasser's edict, bin Dana will use his capabilities and experience to manage the company, 
task was carrying out the Kingdom's strategic plans in oil and gas. The Board of Directors, chaired by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, are working to achieve the company's business file in April of this year. The Board of Directors welcomed the decision, which reflects His Highness's direction to attract national expertise to implement the company's strategic plans. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His <laughs> Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the South Korean Ambassador to the Kingdom, Hwai Kwan Chong. His Highness welcomed the guest and affirmed the deep-rooted bilateral ties in all fields, especially in the fields of sports. The meeting discussed various matters of mutual interest in the sports field. For his part, the Ambassador expressed thanks to His Highness for his efforts to enhance the bilateral ties and developing the field of Bahraini sports, which affirmed a place in world sports. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and current Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC, Dr Abdul Latif Al Ziani, chaired the meeting of the 149th session of the Ministerial Council held in Saudi Arabia. The Minister made a statement on the worrying regional developments as well as the political, security, economic and health challenges. He called on the GCC countries to further cooperate on these matters on the levels of the political leaderships and their peoples and praised the cooperation among these countries in tackling of the pandemic. Alziani explained that the regularity of joint Gulf action is a basic requirement to ensure the cohesion of the system, achieve its goals and implement the decisions of their majesties and highnesses and leaders of GCC states adding that concerted efforts in order to confront the challenges and crises that the region is going through require strengthening cooperation and coordination in the GCC. The Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam Khalif, chaired the 31st meeting of the GCC Ministers in Agricultural Affairs virtually. The meeting discussed various policies in the field to secure food security in the GCC in partnership with the private sector. The Minister affirmed that these efforts contribute to sustainable development in these countries as well as deepening cooperation between them. He referenced the Sheikh Khalifa Award for Palm Trees, which has been won by a project on developing systems to grow such trees. He affirmed the importance of crafting policies to reinforce food security, especially in light of the circumstances under the pandemic. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked first in the Arab region and second in the Middle East for the second year in a row on the Basel AML Index as an independent annual ranking that assesses the risk of money laundering and terrorist financing around the world. Bahrain scored 4.5 points according to the report, which is the only independent indicator issued by a non-profit organisation, rating countries according to the risk of money laundering. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain remains a state with value, civilization and legislation that protects the national economy, security and stability. It is an international pioneer in achieving comprehensive security. This has been clear through the endorsement of many laws and initiatives consistent with international efforts to reinforce security and stability and protect a national economy. In this context, Bahrain has remarkable accomplishments in combating money laundering, terrorist financing and illegal transfer of funds across borders, which are new crimes increasing in size every day despite local, regional and international efforts to confront this phenomena. Members of those international nature crimes are usually located in more than one country. Therefore, their danger and threats are significantly increasing against the strength of the global economy. Consequently, the international community became more convinced of the necessity of improving efforts to combat criminal gangs. Hence, the Kingdom of Bahrain took the initiative through firm and clear direct steps to face the threats. It was among the first countries to issue a special law against money laundering and terrorist financing in 2001. The legislation sets the legal principles to guarantee the detection of any suspicious financial transactions. Also, the Financial Intelligence Directorate was established as a law enforcement unit to receive and analyze cases and reports of money laundering 
financing terrorism, the transfer of illicit funds across borders, and other related crimes in direct cooperation with authorities concerned. Cooperation with relevant international organizations is one of the core responsibilities to exchange information related to combating money laundering and terrorist financing crimes and signing memoranda of understanding with counterparts. Since 2003, the Financial Intelligence Directorate has been a member of the Egmont Group of Financial Intelligence Units, dedicated to developing financial intelligence operations, information sharing and expertise exchange amongst the members. The Directorate has trained teams capable of combating money laundering and terrorist financing efficiently, along with issuing strategic analysis reports using methods and patterns used by criminals to study how to deal with and limit those crimes. The Directorate also refers these types of crimes to the public prosecution to take the necessary legal measures. The Financial Intelligence Directorate has won international recognition and has been awarded with the substantial level of effectiveness by the Financial Action Task Force. And to speak more about this, we're joined on the phone by the Director of Financial Intelligence at the Ministry of Interior and Deputy Chair of AML CFT National Policy Committee, Sheikh Amey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa. Hello, Sheikh Amey. Tell us about what this ranking reflects and how the Kingdom of Bahrain has been able to maintain this ranking in the fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. Thank you for having me. The ranking reflects upon the Basel AML Index, which is considered to be an independent annual ranking that assesses the risk of money laundering and terrorism financing around the world. Published by the Basel Institute on Governance in 2012, it provides risk scores based on data from 17 indicators. The risk scores cover five domains, which AML CFT framework covers 65% of the report. And through this, the Kingdom of Bahrain was evaluated and given a 4.50 overall score and risk analysis for all indicators. With that score, the Kingdom of Bahrain was placed the 25th rank globally as lower risk in crime, money laundering, and terrorism financing, and ranked number one in the Arab region as the least dangerous in crime of money laundering, terrorism financing, and in second place on the MENA region. When it comes about maintaining the, the ranking, Successful efforts in Bahrain in the endorsement of new legislations and implementations of action plans based on the Bahrain Mutual Evaluation Report recommendations, which were adopted in 2018, were behind this international recognition. We will strive to continue our commitment in implementing the recommendations to combat money laundering, terrorism financing, and weapon proliferation. Specifically in the Financial Intelligence Directory, as a national centre to fight money laundering, terrorism financing, that receives and analyse cases and reports of money laundering, terrorism financing, and the transfer of illicit funds across borders and other related crimes, continue to coordinate with all concerned authorities domestically and with our international FIU counterparts. At the Directorate, we have trained teams that are efficient and fully capable of working on combating money laundering terrorism financing cases. Thank you. And that was the Director of Financial Intelligence at the Ministry of Interior and Deputy Chair of AML CFT National Policy Committee, Sheikh Amey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa. Thank you for joining us. The National Vaccination Campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,159,039 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,101,552 had taken the second, and 269,884 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 912, with 87 recoveries and 61 registered new cases and no deaths. 
28 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 26 are contacts of active cases and 7 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.